Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Emergency Management Associates. Coming to you from the Area Command, 392 miles west of Kitty Hawk Beach, North Carolina. We want to welcome you here to our program tonight. I am going to wait to start this program until we get a few more people here. Demon Catman Juanito are the first people into our chat room tonight. Catherine is next. Welcome, Catherine. We appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Richard Smith is in here. Catherine Sigerson, like I said, is here. She's driving. <laughs> no problem, Catherine. We just appreciate you here. We appreciate all of you here. Eight Ducks is here. Hurricane Heather here is here. We appreciate that as well. I'm going to start this program talking about the accident in the Baltimore Harbor. I want to talk about the accident in Baltimore Harbor. The reason for that, number one, it's the biggest story. Number two, there's a lot more to it than what they're talking about. I want to make sure without possible other contrary information, we want to make sure you get the information that you need. Now, what most of the media is putting out is hogwash. It is extreme hogwash at the very least. Okay. Now, I am not known for my love of the federal government. Okay. Now, I've been part of watching the telecast of the National Transportation Safety Board. I've been watching it most of the day. I've also got video of what happened in Baltimore Harbor today. What the media would have us believe some people are putting on, on social media is also not true. I have been back and forth with the video literally all day literally all day long, second by second, I watched what happened. I want to make sure that everybody realizes what happened. That is exactly my complete goal here. I do not want any suggestions that there was anything wrong that wasn't there. Okay, the National Transportation Safety Board is not answering any questions. Okay, they may have another briefing tonight. They said they're not putting anybody on board the Dolly ship, the container ship that hit the piling in Baltimore Harbor. Now, I want to say this. One of the things that was not done well, let me back up. The persons that were piloting the ship when it made the collision, collision with the bridge were from the Baltimore Harbor Master's Office. They had two harbor pilots piloting the boat. The captain of the ship, they say, they said at first, was from Ukraine. He was not. The captain of the Dolly was not from Ukraine at all. The captain of the Dolly, as well as the entire crew, was from India. I want to make that point perfectly clear. The crew was from India and nowhere else. Okay? I want to make that perfectly clear. I don't want any misinterpretations at all. This is too much of a big story for misinterpretations. Okay, this is too much of a big story for misinterpretations. <sighs> okay, D is put out a chat here in the chat room that is entirely in opposition to what we're talking about. D, if you do not talk about what we are talking about now, you will not be allowed 
to put your comment here in the chat. You've been taken down. Okay? You've been taken down. If you do not pay attention to what we're talking about, you will be removed from this channel. I want to make that perfectly clear. Anybody who is watching this channel right now, you need to pay attention to what we're talking about or you will be gone. Okay? I don't have time for trolls. I don't have, none of us have time for trolls, including our moderators. Okay? These moderators we have on emergency management associates are top notch. I have labeled them as expert mods. I stand by that. Okay? So please pay attention to what we're talking about. I had one of our longtime um, members of our EMA family say they were leaving this channel because they were told not to have capital letters going through the entire message. That was my doing. I advised all of our mods not to allow capital letters. I was told quite a few years ago by a Google mod, Google owns YouTube. Google had moderators on our channel and they said not to allow capital letters in the chat. The only time capital letters are allowed is at the beginning of a sentence. Okay, I want to make that perfectly clear. I don't want any Google mods coming in our chat and taking down chatters here in the chat. I do not want anyone removed because they're too stupid to pay attention to directions. And I say that literally. Okay? I'm not calling you stupid, but what I am saying, if you don't obey our letters here, our moderators, you don't obey what I am saying, you'll not be allowed to be here. I already had someone that decided that they like capital letters. Guess what? You're gone. Plain and simple. Okay? You won't be allowed in this chat tonight. I don't care. Okay? My rules are my rules, and I abide by what I was told several years ago. Okay? That's the bottom line. This is my channel. I don't want to be taken down by Google or YouTube. Pay attention to me. Okay? I want you to pay attention to what we're talking about or don't bother putting it in chat. Okay? Heart Sada is in the chat tonight. I welcome them back. I haven't seen Heart Sada in the chat in a while. The bridge, the bridge that was brought down by this ship was called the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Francis Scott Key was a poet. He also wrote the Star Spangled Banner. So this was a very important bridge. The bridge has been there for many, many years, a lot of years. Okay. Now, what I have been saying, and yes, we're being buffered. I see YouTube is buffering us again. You know, Whenever I get started talking about what this is, what's going on, all of a sudden YouTube buffers us. This is typical of what YouTube does. Okay? Now, a US Navy vet who is going to rename or remain nameless. He was a navigation specialist. He shared some interesting facts about today. He says once a ship like that loses power, it loses almost all ability to steer. And it's definitely not enough to steer off the way it was. Okay? It was not enough to steer off the way it was. Okay? This Navy vet says it appeared to be intentional. Okay? Now, with that said, I've been looking at what happened last night. I have been up a great deal of today. I wasn't up right when this ship struck 
the Francis Scott Key Bridge. But it wasn't long after that. With that said, I have done a lot of additional research. Again, I found that the ship's crew was from India. They were all from India, like I said a few minutes ago. Okay? Now, there are roughly 40 to 100 vessels that were immediately impacted that were about to make port in Baltimore. And they can no longer do that. They will now have to be rerouted to you, which means Baltimore River. Okay. Now, Polly is asking for, said it was a direct hit, though. Yes, it was. It was absolutely, de definitely a direct hit from the ship to the bridge. Okay. Hart Sada says, strange that the ship was from Singapore. The owner of the ship. Okay, the owner of the ship from Singapore. I'm going to talk about that more in a little while. Okay, about 40 to 100 vessels that were inbound in Baltimore Harbor no longer can be there. They had to turn back out into the Atlantic Ocean and go further south other harbors. Okay. This poses an immediate security and safety concern, as now that harbor will be severely overwhelmed for what is believed to be several months at least and possibly several years. Okay? During our research today, it could be up to five years before the Francis Scott Key Bridge will be rebuilt. The mayor of Baltimore led a news conference today and said it could possibly be rebuilt by 2025. I've done additional research now, and it's going to be at least four to five years before the Francis Scott Key Bridge will be rebuilt. I'm going to make that perfectly clear. It's actually a logistical nightmare. Shipments of various items. So it's not immediately known what chains will be impacted. But it's not just that. The Port Authority will also have to have their ears to the ground for, for potential dangers. Even realize that, and again, we're being buffered really bad right now. Okay? Breno, your chat has been taken off. Okay? What you said is not even, um, what shall I say, correct? Not correct at all, okay? So I have limited you for at least what you're talking about. Don't bother coming in this chat. I've done a lot of research, guys. Don't cross me. What I'm putting out is actual fact, okay? I spent hours today researching and re-researching information. Hurricane Heather said there was construction crews on the bridge when it went down. They were filling potholes on the bridge. The bridge was a concrete and steel bridge. It was a suspension bridge. One part of the bridge is connected to the other part. And I'm going to show you in a video that I literally took second by second to watch it. I wanted to make sure that I had factual information before I came on the air. As I said, I went through hours of research. Okay. G. Mike says, that's what makes it suspicious because they won't, okay? Yes, they're buffering me. They're probably buffering the audio really bad. They're buffering the video really bad. It's stupid, okay? Anatolian Conge Wolf says, yeah, I was looking into this bridge today. I've been looking into the bridge. I've been looking into everything today, okay? 
I'm trying to give you actual information, okay? This is going to be a logistical nightmare from now until five years from now, okay? Yes, er, there are potential dangers in the shipping containers on board the Dolly ship, okay? Now, some people reason that some of the dirty things in the containers are really the dirty kind, okay? I'm not even going to speculate about that right now. I want to make sure that you understand. Hartstein says, I'm canceling my subscription tonight. Censorship is wrong. Hartstein, it's not wrong if the people are not factual. Okay? If they're not factual, I don't want to hear it. If they're speculating, I don't want to hear it. This channel is about facts. I'm sorry you don't want to be part of this channel. We want to put out the facts. Okay? I'm sorry you're canceling your subscription. I don't want you to do that. Okay? Please understand that. YouTube is the one that's censoring me buffering me and taking this channel down. They've been doing it all week long. The only time they did not do it was Sunday. Okay? Sunday was the first time I actually got a program out without buffering. Okay? I'm the one that's being censored because nobody wants to hear the truth. Okay? I'm not censoring you. I'm not censoring anybody except those trolls that want to come here and badmouth me. And the first one did. Okay? So please don't mess, or not Hartsada, I'm sorry Hartsada. YouTube has been messing with, with me for years. Okay? Richard Smith is not buffering bad here tonight. I hope not. Everybody, please calm down. Hart Sada says, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Now, someone said today, okay, that the Port Authority here in Baltimore will have to have their ears to the ground for potential dangers inside those containers. Now, the National Transportation Safety Administration is in on this investigation. Sweet Polly Purebred just gave us a $15 super chat. Thank you so much for that, Polly. God bless you. Keep us on the air. By the way, and everybody else, okay, we're upgrading our broadcasting software. We're upgrading everything. So we hope to have a greater depth of knowledge of what's actually going on. And I'm going to be able to have the ability to monitor what YouTube is doing and possibly even overcome what they're doing, okay? So that's where I'm going on that too. Now, please know this. We're doing the best we can with what we have right now. But by mid-next week, we should be on our computer. By mid-next week, we should have better software and everything else. Anyway. This ship, well, let me back up for just a second. Many of us have had gut feelings that things are going to be severely intensifying this year. And yes, I believe that to be true. Okay? I believe that things are going to be very intense the rest of this year. With that said, let's keep going here. The Dolly cargo ship was a Singapore flagged cargo ship. It spans the length of 984 feet. It has a width of approximately 157 feet. It holds 22 crew members all of whom, like I said earlier, are based in India. The ship had just departed from Port Baltimore at 1 a.m. Earlier today, I had been told 
that the accident here in Baltimore happened at 2.30 a.m. this morning. I'm sorry that was false information that I have been given. The ship hit the, the pier of the Francis Scott Key Bridge at approximately 1.30 a.m. this morning. Okay? The Dolly was embarking on a 27-day journey to Colombo, Sri Lanka. Colombo, Sri Lanka. Before it came here, it had been in the Panama Canal Zone. It made a stop in New Jersey. It made a stop in New York. And I believe it made one other stop before it went to Baltimore. Okay. On its way out of Baltimore Harbor, before it even got to the bridge. Okay. The harbor master pilot who is piloting the dolly at the time of the collision. The harbor master was in charge of the dolly. Okay. Even though the captain was on board, the harbor master pilot and his assistant were piloting the dolly cargo ship. What they did was not within the normal guidelines of leaving the harbor. Okay. They were not in the traffic lane. There's a traffic lane in a harbor in order to leave a harbor. The traffic lane is generally, generally right smack dab in the middle of the harbor so the ship's keel won't run aground. The dolly was not in the middle of the harbor as it should have been. And as a result, the turns that it made let her off course. Okay? The turns that it had to make to go under that bridge were off course. It was already too close to hitting the pier when it started having problems, allegedly running out of power, the power coming back on and going back off. Okay? Allegedly... I'm saying allegedly because we only have the information that people are telling the media. I want to make everybody sure of what we're talking about here. The information we are getting right now is like third-hand information. Okay? The ship said it lost propulsion, lost engine capacity as it was leaving the port. The ship had warned Maryland officials through the harbor master because they were communicating with the harbor master and the harbor master made the call to Maryland officials that a possible collision with the Francis Scott Key Bridge was possibly imminent. Okay, I want to make that perfectly clear. The ship, the harbor master pilot in the ship and his second in command assistant made the call that the ship was on a collision course with the Francis Scott Key Bridge Pier. Okay? I want to make sure everybody realizes what we're talking about. Now, They lost propulsion, okay? The crew notified officials that they had lost control and the traffic was stopped on the bridge, okay? Prior to this happening, cars, trucks, and other vehicles were allowed to cross the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The construction crews on the bridge were allowed one lane at a time. So they, I don't know how many lanes was on or were on the Francis Scott Key Bridge. It was a definitely long bridge. It was a large suspension bridge, okay? And in just a couple minutes, I'm going to show you about a minute's long video of what happened, okay? Now, with that said, the crew notified the officials that they may have problems, that they might 
hit the bridge. So the harbor master in the harbor master office notified officials that were at either end of the bridge to stop traffic so that they would know that no other vehicles would be crossing the bridge. Now, with that said, construction crews were on the bridge. Okay. There may have been a few other vehicles, up to six, six or seven vehicles on the bridge. Okay. I'm telling you guys, that's all. The accident happened at 1.30 a.m. in the morning, meaning that heavy traffic that normally traversed the bridge was not on the bridge. Okay? They were not on the bridge. Heavy traffic hours would be like 3 p.m. to about 7 or 8 p.m. and about 6 a.m. to 9 or 10 a.m. Okay, the crews of the bridge that were working there knew what was going on. They absolutely knew what was going on. Hart Sada, thank you for that $2 donation. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. God bless you. We appreciate that. The crews on board the bridge knew what was going on. They had been notified by the harbor master's office of what was going on as well. Okay. So we had traffic crews at the end of the bridge on each end of the bridge, closing off traffic. The construction crews or filling in potholes had also been notified. Okay. That's what we know about. Now, the pilots of this ship at the time were Harbor master pilots. That is required for every major vessel, and I'm told even naval vessels have harbor pilots guiding them in and out of the harbors everywhere around the United States. Okay? That's fact. Now, they stopped the traffic. Those people, the crews that were at either end of the bridge stopping the traffic are heroes. Many other people could have been killed. Many other cars, trucks, and other vehicles could have crashed into the water had authorities not closed down traffic at the bridge. Okay? This happened. Now, the Synergy Group that owns the ship confirmed the collision in a statement to ABC News Today, saying the ship had been piloted by two individuals during the incident, the harbor pilots. Okay? The pilots of the ship were local people. The waterway into and out of the port is closed, and there are no other routes into the port. So it is closed off the second busiest port in the Mid-Atlantic. Like I said, the collision took place at 1.30 a.m. Okay. The Singapore-based company Grace Ocean is the listed owner of the Dolly. The ship is managed by a firm called Synergy Group. All crew members, like I said a few minutes ago, including the two pilots that have been accounted for, there are no reports of injuries. The collision did not result in any pollution neither the water or the air. The Dolly had been chartered by a Danish shipping firm named Maersk, M-A-E-R-S-K. Okay. Early this month, the ship had traveled, like I said, through the Panama Canal to Newark, New Jersey, before traveling to Norfolk, Virginia, and finally reaching the port of Baltimore. 
That was their route of travel. Now, before I get into my next part of this investigation that I conducted, I want to show you the video that I have that lasts about 50 sec 52 seconds. Okay, this is the Francis Scott Key Bridge before anything happened. And here, out in the background, over here at the left side of the video, is the container ship Dolly. Okay, now I'm going to start this video, and I will be stopping it at various points. Notice where the ship is going. Okay, look at it right now. Okay, I just stopped it. At this point, it appears that the ship is headed right for the pier. You notice lights on the ship. The lights on the ship are showing that we have power here at the ship. Watch every second as I turn on the video and turn it down again or, or stop it again. Okay, I stopped it right there. It looks like it's headed off to the right side of the pier. Watch what happens next. Look at that. It's turning right in the direction of the pier. It still has full power. Look at that. Right now, again, it's headed right for the pier. It's still under power. Look at that. It's lost some power. Most of the lights on the dolly have been turned off. It's lost power. One more second here. Okay, look at that. Again, the ship has power just seconds before it hits the Francis Scott Key Bridge Pillar. Right here again, it turns directly into the bridge, bridge pier. Look at it. It's headed right for the pier. Look at that. Okay. Now I'm going to back it up here. I want to show you what happened. Literally second by second. Okay. I want to point out that there's been a lot of discussion in social media about exactly what happened here. Okay. There is no detonation of any of the suspension parts of this bridge, okay? Someone was here on social media saying that there was TNT ignited at the parts top of the parts of the suspension part of the bridge. That is entirely false. Hold on a second. I've got to take part, take care of something for just a second. Okay, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Okay, now I'm going to move this forward literally second by second. I've been going over this literally all day long. Okay, I want to make sure you guys understand what happened here. Okay, it's the ship is just approaching the bridge right now. Okay. Right here, they begin striking the bridge pier. Okay, now I'm going to back this up. 
for just a second here. I want you to understand what's going on here. Okay. I've been going over this literally second by second. Okay. Here it's just about ready to strike the pier any second now. Okay. Right there it is hitting the pier. Okay, you can see it hitting up here right there. We have to take it second by second here. Look at the ship. It has power. Okay, right there. You're seeing the pier hit, and it's going down to the left into the harbor there. Okay, watch what happens next. I want to show you what happens when the pier goes down. The smoke that you see here, if you can see that smoke is coming from the dolly. Okay, there is no explosion at all on the bridge. the pier go down okay it's at the front part side of the ship you see what's going on to the left part of the bridge okay it's starting its partial collapse right there okay look at that okay. let me back it up again there okay that is the beginning of, see that plane right here, okay? Right, but the pier is starting to collapse there. Okay, the side of the pier to the left of the ship here was the first part of the bridge to collapse. It was a suspension bridge. Those cables on the bridge hold the bridge up. When that side of the bridge collapsed, it starts to pull the entire bridge apart. Look at this. See that? That entire part to hold that bridge up. All the huge, by the way, to the bridge. Okay? Look what's happening to the rest of the bridge here. Okay? That part of the bridge by that pier is also going to collapse right now. Okay? side of the bridge goes down and it literally paid right here and the rest it starts pulling the rest of the bridge down okay there was no explosion on the bridge there was no explosion at the top of the superstructure where the suspension cables are there are no TNT charges going on I want to make sure everybody is aware of it because there are people that have said that, and they doctored the video to try to prove that there was TNT that brought the Linda Covington is asking what the ship's um, flag was. It was out of Singapore. I mentioned this at the beginning of the video. Okay, I've I've given you the history of the ship. There was one other part of the history of this boat that I didn't tell you. And the company 16, the pilot of this boat, the Indian pilot of this boat was responsible for a collision at the Quay Wall in New Jersey. So this ship hit the Quay Wall, which is the concrete wall at the harbor. 
where the ship was supposed to dock. It hit the quay wall, possibly causing minor damage. I've seen this happen before with Navy ships and other ships. Again, the left side of the tank. I want everybody to understand what happened here. Look at that. It literally took the rest of the bridge down. Polly just gave us another $5 super chat. Thank you so much. Please allow Ron to explain this story. Thank you. I appreciate that, Polly, so much. It really makes a difference. Okay. Pam Miller says, so frustrating YouTube has to play games. I agree. But look what happened here. Okay. The left side of the bridge here pulled the rest of the bridge down here. After the ship struck that pier, the entire bridge started coming apart. The major part of this construction was out here in the middle of the bridge. They were filling potholes, concrete potholes. Okay, let's continue. I want to show you this. Look at that. Now, you see where the roadway is, okay? The suspension part of the bridge went up in the air, didn't it? As the left-hand side collapses, the suspension went up into the air, leaving the roadway dangling and falling into the harbor. Look at that. The roadway here dangles and falls into the harbor. Let's take it a step further. Look at that. That's what happened. As that pier was destroyed, as that pier was destroyed, you saw the rest of the bridge go down. That's why it went down. Once that pier was destroyed and the left side rigging of the bridge, the steel suspension cables went down, it pulled the rest of the bridge completely, completely down. That's what happened. Do we have any questions? I just showed you everything. The only, the only smoke you see is from the dolly. Okay, it's diesel smoke. That's what happens when you have a diesel powered ship. You have black smoke. Okay, and it is a huge mess, Eight Duck said. Absolutely, it's a huge mess. Does anyone have any questions so far? Now, I know I've taken a lot of time to show you the one to know what was going on. Hurricane Heather says that was calculated. That's possible. Okay. I'm not giving a, a, out a doubt that it may have been planned. It's possible. I'm not going to say that tonight at all. Okay. Could this be another 11? I don't know. Okay. There's a lot of factors that pull into this. There are a lot of factors that pull into this. Now, the second thing I want you to see, look up at the top of this video. Look at the time element. 129.58. 129.58. One thirty. A.M. this morning. 1.30 a.m. this morning. Isaiah's granny says she keeps getting kicked out. I'm sorry about that. Okay. It's happened to me quite a bit over on Mark Wages' program, on Mark Pyre's program, and some of the other friends that I have that I watch here on YouTube. It happens a lot. Okay. Do you have any questions here? Jim saying, Ron, keeping us up wide awake. I hope so. I feel that this is vitally important for everybody to understand what happened here early this morning. Do you have any questions for me? Because I'm going to go on with my explanation right now. Okay. 
I want to make sure everybody is aware of what actually happened. Okay. I'm not putting forth any ideas of conspiracy or anything right now. Again, like I said at the beginning of this program, I do not trust the government. I have great reason not to trust them. Sweet Polly is saying, I have a question. Do you think they're going to aim for more bridges now that the train incidents are over with? Polly, guess what? The train incidents are not over. Train accidents continue to happen. Train derailments are still happening. Okay? We, they, the media sure is covering it, but I see it every day. I see it every day. Rob52 is here. I want to thank Rob for being here as well. Rob is one of my best friends, and I appreciate that. It's all over the news, and rightly so. It's a big story. It's a big story. A. Duck says, I miss the days when conspiracy was not the norm. I agree, so do I. Okay? Now, Hurricane just saw now on Fox. I watch Fox some today, too. For the first time in forever, I actually watched a local news channel. They also ran video of what happened. But again, they did not run second by second like I just did. Okay? I wanted to make sure we knew what the problem was here. It's definitely, it's definitely the ship that caused this. Like I said, the harbor master pilots were the ones piloting the ship when it hit the pier. Again, they did not follow the common course to leave the Boston Harbor. They were far to the south of the center of the harbor. And as such, they came too close to that pier, and as a result, all of a sudden, they hit the pier that brought down the bridge. Okay? That's what happened. That is exactly what happened. Now, I have other reconstruction people that have also been party with me in recreating ship accidents and car accidents. Now, when I was a police officer, my primary job after about maybe 10 years, my primary job was accident investigation. About 1997, there was a huge storm that pulled into San Diego. It was a tropical storm with winds in excess of 50 miles per hour. I was out in it. I was helping people get through heavy, heavy water from the rain that were causing car accidents. As I spoke, with, spoke about probably four or five times during the five years that I've been on the air. I've investigated a lot of traffic accidents. I'm a reconstruction specialist. At one point in 1997, my captain was asked by the Navy to have me come over and investigate a shipboard accident. During that huge tropical storm that pulled into San Diego that day, and it was in San Diego for a couple days, but during the height of that storm that evening, two ships collided. What happened? The wind from the storm came in and hit the side of one ship. And the side of that ship was moored to posts on the pier. Great big, huge, two and a half foot thick concrete posts, mooring posts on the pier. And that ship getting hit by 50 mile per hour winds broke those concrete mooring posts off the pier. And as a result, those huge concrete posts hit the side of the ship. 
and the wind was hitting the ship, moving it through the harbor. It moved through the harbor to the extent that about 100 yards away, there was another ship anchored to another pier. And that ship was pushed by the wind, blowing 50 miles per hour into the side of another ship. Now, up until that time, I'd never investigated a shipboard collision. Never. That was the first ship-to-ship collision that I had ever investigated. And I told my captain to tell the Navy that I had never investigated a ship-versus-ship collision. They didn't care. They wanted an expert to investigate this collision to the, from the two ships. So I did. I took pictures. I watched both of the ships moving down, bobbing up and down in the water. I saw those great big concrete mooring posts dragging down the side of the one ship. I saw where the posts had been moored solid into the pier where the ship had been. I took pictures of that. Again, I made sure of the wind strength. I called the control tower of the Coronado Naval Air Station. I called the control tower to Lindbergh Field in San Diego, the main airport in San Diego. I got expert advice on how fast the wind was blowing. So I knew what was going on. Okay, that's what happened. Okay, up until then, I had never investigated a ship accident. After that, I investigated another three or four of them. No big deal. I did the same thing. I made sure that every stone had been tipped over. I made sure there was not a thing left that could be not investigated. Okay. I took my time deciding the cause of each of those ship accidents. And I'm pretty good at it. Okay? I never had any training for shipboard accidents, but I became very good at it. I was an expert when it came to automobile accidents. Okay? So I'm telling you right now, I took my time investigating what happened here. Iceman, I'm glad you subscribed. Thank you so much. Now, folks, this is important. Okay? Eight Ducks is talking about infrastructure. is aging as well with this administration. Infrastructure has been aging for about 30 years. And very little has been done to improve highways or highway safety. Very little has been done in 30 years. Guess what? As an accident investigator, when I investigated accidents in California and Colorado, I transferred from San Diego to Colorado. When I investigated accidents, copies of my report that were when the vehicles involved either messed up the roadway or the roadway was responsible for the accident, copies of my reports went to the state of California and also to the state of Colorado. I spoke with investigators at the state levels. I spoke to investigators in the Navy, JAG officers as well. It's Preppy Leah just gave us another $2 super chat. Thank you so much for that. She says, hello, sir. Have a good day. Thank you so much. God bless you for that. Please subscribe to our channel. Those of you that are here watching this program, please make sure you're subscribed to this channel. It's going to benefit you, and it's also going to benefit your families, I guarantee. Okay? Now, Linda Covington says money to Ukraine. No. 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 This accident has nothing to do with Ukraine. I cotton pick and guarantee it. It has nothing to do with Ukraine at all. None of the ship's personnel belong to Ukraine. They belong to India. Okay. Yes, 
there were people here on social media and there were people in the mainstream media that had beginning that were talking about Ukrainian people being on board. That's not the case. Okay. That is not the case. Antolian is at, it says it's getting hard or is very hard finding the link. And I'm sorry about that. A ducks is asking Heather and granny, if you're still here. Okay. I'm just want to make sure that everybody understands what I've talked about so far. I've told you about the origin of the ship. I've told you when it happened and how it happened. I've shown you a video about it. Okay. Now, there is a reporter named Lara Logan. L-A-R-A-L-O-G-A-N. Okay. She is an independent reporter with Intel sources. Okay. Now, she talked about what was going on with this bridge collapse. Yes, Linda, the government is sending taxpayer money to Ukraine, but it has nothing to do with this shipboard accident, okay? The government has not been spending taxpayer money on infrastructure in quite some time, okay? Now, as Lara Logan talked about today's accident bought at the Francis Scott D. Bridge, it's the second busiest strategic roadway for hazardous materials. Okay. In Maryland, in Maryland, this is the only bridge where hazardous materials are allowed on. There is a tunnel under the harbor. There is a roadway tunnel under the harbor. Up until now, hazardous materials were not allowed through that tunnel because they didn't want anybody blowing up the tunnel. Now, anybody that's transporting hazardous materials is going to have to go through that tunnel. But they're going to have to pay a lot of money to be able to do it. They're going to have to make sure that they are the only ones in the tunnel at the time the hazardous materials are going to be going through the tunnel. They're going, the state people in Maryland are going to make sure that nobody else is going to get hurt from having these hazardous materials go through the tunnel. Okay? It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. They're going to have to use the tunnel to transport hazardous materials, but anybody going through that tunnel is going to be heavily scrutinized. Okay? Terry Flores says, Ron, you've seen the painting painted by Salvador Dali, who the ship is named after. The famous painting is called The Broken Bridge. I am well aware of that. I appreciate you putting it up here so other people know that. Okay. YouTube has that picture. Okay. Yes, it is all crazy. In fact, while we're talking about that, Barack Obama has a movie on Netflix called Broken Bridge. And guess what? That movie has to do with a big shipping container ship. And if you go to Netflix, you're going to see a great big container ship. Looks like it's heading for the beach. Okay. So Barack Obama also had a container ship in a movie. Conspiracy theory right now. I don't want to even go there. I'm not going to go there. Harsad is asking another question. How will they get the barges off? 
She said they heard about the scene when the ship comes into the shore. Yes. How are they going to get this up or not? The shipping out of Boss out of Port Baltimore is going to be stopped for years. The Port of Baltimore is closed. It's going to remain closed until they reopen it. And it may be a long time before they do that. Number one, they got they have to get all the parts of the bridge out of the water. Otherwise, the harbor will not allow the ships to come in. That's going to take time in and of itself. They have to do the investigation. That's going to take time. Now we're probably talking six months to a year. At some point in time, they're going to start rebuilding the bridge. Now, when the mayor talked early this morning, he was hoping to get the bridge built between now and the December 2025. It's not going to happen like that. They're just not going to do that. Okay? They're just not going to be able to do that. Aubrey is saying all those cables alone, I agree. Okay? Yes, there's cables down at the bottom of the ocean there, all kinds of other problems. Steel supports and everything are down there. And yes, eight ducks, you're absolutely right. It is huge, and it's going to become a very huge economic disaster. Absolutely it is. Karen Richard just gave us a $50 super chat. Thank you so much, Karen. We appreciate that. God bless you for that. We definitely appreciate that. Gosh, you guys really know how, how to get to my heart. Thank you so much for that. That means so much. Help, helping keep this program on the air. Now, Lara Logan asked a question. And this is a little bit of conspiracy theory here. I told you I wasn't going to get into this, but I'm going to repeat what she said. It's important to understand what happened here. Okay. Was it an accident? Okay. The second busiest strategic roadway for hazardous materials. Lara Logan called it an absolutely brilliant strategic attack. An absolutely brilliant strategic attack. Now, Lara Logan is an investigative reporter. She wrote this morning, early this morning, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, collapsed after a cargo ship collided with a support column, causing the bridge to collapse. I showed you the video earlier. Showed you exactly how it came down. Okay? The Francis Scott Key Bridge is a significant commuter route carrying the Baltimore Beltway, I-695 over the Pata, I can't even pronounce the name of this river, the Patapasco Pata 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 River at the southern end of the Baltimore Harbor. Okay, I-695. There are no official reports on casualties yet, okay? There's one construction worker that was rescued from the harbor with minor injuries. Another construction worker is in the hospital with severe injuries after he was pulled out of the water. Only six other people are still missing as of right now. Only six other people are still missing, okay? There are unconfirmed cars in the water and reports of several construction workers unaccounted for. Like I said, there's six people reported missing right now. Okay. A road crew, like I said, was fixing potholes on the bridge at the time of the accident. Two people were rescued from the water. One was only having minor injuries. The other has serious injuries and was hurt and hospitalized. Okay. Search efforts have been ongoing since the accident happened for the six people who are missing. Navy diver, Navy divers 
um, divers from a local maritime unit over there in Maryland are also there. And I'm sure other Navy divers are coming from all over, over to Maryland to help rescue these people. Okay, there's divers still probably in the water right now as I speak. In that video, we showed you the ship's lights that can be seen going off and on. Off and on again as it appears to pass by the support column. Suddenly and inexplicably, the lights on the cargo ship turn back on as the ship turn toward the support column and hits it head on. That's what we told you. That's what we showed you. The entire span of the bridge immediately collapsed literally in seconds, right smack dead in front of the ship. There have been no reported injuries that was on. I see we're getting buffered very badly here. I'm sorry we're not for guys, that's YouTube for Now, there are many questions. There are many power outages that the cargo ship was experienced only moments before the accident. Okay? Hurricane Heather says it's blurry and buffering. Yes, I see that. It's sad. The mainstream media is reporting it to be a curious collision as an accident. ABC News wrote the harbor pilot and assistant harbor more to the incident. That is according to a Coast Guard memo that was obtained by ABC News, and I got a hold of it earlier this afternoon. Connie Quake is talking about buffering and cutting in or out, what I said. For your help tonight, Rebecca, we really appreciate it. Now, I got a hold of that Coast Guard memo. Okay, so I'm very well aware of what happened. An infrastructure security agency report that said that the container ship and warrant. Now, Truth in Plain Sight also is reporting, and that is a social media point, a website, saying it was not random. Redrawn, hang in there, the signal will get better. Yes, I hope it is. God bless you, Mark. Thank you so much for that super chat. We really appreciate it so much. Thank you so much, Mark. We appreciate you being here. That means a lot to me. Mark Wages is a dear friend of mine. He and his family are awesome people. If you guys don't know Mark Wages, go over to Wages World and give his channel some love. Okay, He's a good man when it comes to solar, the things that go on on the sun, and forecasting what's going on on the sun, which, again, leads to earthquakes. Mark Wages is it. Okay, And Mark Wages all the time talks about me and Emergency Management Associates giving you information about earthquakes. And yes, what has happened on the sun during the past week has directly related to earthquakes. And I'll get into that in a few minutes. Okay. Now, again, the conspiracy theory is, okay, truth in plain sight is feeding the conspiracy theory here. They said it was not random. Multiple camera angles already set up, okay? Now, I told you why those camera angles were set up. Don't believe everything you read. The camera angles were set up because in 2023, most of the harbors put up webcams. Almost every harbor in the nation has got a webcam and multiple webcams in San Diego and multiple webcams in Maryland. Okay, I want to make that perfectly clear. 
The webcam angles were previously set up long before this happened. Okay? So don't believe all the conspiracy theories here. Okay? Truth in plain sight is reporting every news report outlet reporting precisely six missing people in tandem. Six missing people. That was a word put out by the mayor of Baltimore this morning. I was watching the news conference live. Wages, thank you for that. He says, Ron does a great job with reporting accurate info. Always on point. Thank you so much. I hope to shout that I am. Okay? But like I said, I'm trying to put to rest any of these conspiracy theories. Number one, the cameras. They had been set up a long time before this accident happened. I don't believe it has anything to do with this accident. The camera angles were put up so people could watch ships coming in, into and out of Baltimore Harbor. People get a kick out of it. I've watched people in San Diego do the same thing. You can go to the San Diego webcams and see the same thing at San Diego Harbor. They're all over. One of the webcams for San Diego Harbor is on a multi-story live-in building condominium building right next to the harbor. One of my friends, Jeff, lives in that building. Okay, that's how come I know about it. Now, ADUX says those ships don't turn on a dime. You're right. There's no way they can. Once they build up speed, they continue. And they're very hard to slow down, especially a huge container ship. They can put the, mo the engine blades the propellers into reverse mode, but it's not going to stop that ship on a dime. It's just not going to do it. Trindle Ray says gross negligence. I happen to pretty much agree with that. Gross negligence. Rob 52 says they have cameras on the Golden Gate Bridge as well. Absolutely. Christina Carr is asking, and this is a good question, did they do a gr drug screening on the individuals that re were responsible for this accident? I can almost assuredly say they are going to, or that it's already been done. Okay. That is the first thing that is done when one of these accidents happen. One of the first things that's done at a car accident is to determine whether the drivers have been driving drunk or under the influence of something else. It's absolutely a fact. Okay? As soon as these harbor pilots have had a boat pull up next to it, they're immediately taken in for a drug screen, including the harbor pilot. Okay? That's a fact. I've seen it done. I have actually been in a room where somebody from San Diego Harbor had been brought into my police station and I blew them, a breathalyzer test. So I've done that. Aubrey saying, remember the Valdez incident? Absolutely. Wages World says, yep, always a breath test and blood draw in big stuff. And that's exactly what's going on here. It's either already been done or those people, well, I know it's been done by now. Okay. They have to do it within the first two hours when something like this happens. They cannot allow drugs to pee out of someone's system. They have to do a drug test immediately. They probably put someone on the ship to do it right then and there. Okay. Or they drug those people immediately off the ship and left other pilots from the harbor into the ship to make sure the ship stays solid and isn't going to cause more damage or try to leave. Okay? That is a fact. Richard Smith says RCMP have a weed test now too. Oh, yeah. The United States police, no matter where they are, U.S. law enforcement officers include sheriffs, also test for drugs, weed, marijuana, 
Mary Jane. Okay, they absolutely do that. In Denver, one of my good friends, nah, I better not mention his name. One of my good friends was a first police officer that tested a person positive for using weed that had been involved in an accident. He was the first police officer to test someone that was made was positive for smoking weed prior to an accident. And his case stuck. Okay? And yes, they work. They're very accurate. Yes, Heather, I did say Mary Jane. Okay? That's one of the words. <laughs> okay, that's one of the words. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Anyway, guys, Butterfly is saying the captain of the citizen of Ukraine, no, you're wrong. The captain of the ship, and I verified that and re-verified it. The captain of the ship is from India. The entire crew is from India. This accident has nothing to do with Ukraine. I can guarantee that. I'll lay my life on the line for that. I've done the research on it. This accident has nothing to do with Ukraine. Mary Jane says, Tom Petty did his last dance with Mary Jane. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right, Mark. Anyway, we've seen stuff happen. We've seen things happen in the past. Now, truth in plain sight is throwing out a conspiracy theory. I've seen it. The conspiracy theory stinks. It stinks to high heaven. Saying it involves the occult and numerology and symbolism. No. This case has nothing to do with that. I want to make sure, plain, darn sure, of what is going on. Like I said, I have done a lot of hours of research on this. Okay? The cameras over in Baltimore Harbor and other harbors around the United States broadcast the goings on in the harbor year round for ship watchers. You can go over to stream time live and look at the cameras that caught the incident that went live on May 4th, 2023. And they've been broadcasting continuously since July 12th, 2023. Okay. But like I said, I can lay my life on the line with all this information. Okay. Hurricane Heather says, I got to go. I need to walk my puppy. Heather, thank you for being here as well. We really appreciate it. Does anybody have any questions in regards to the Baltimore Harbor incident that I've talked about now for the last hour and hour and 10 minutes? Hurricane Heather, thank you. Saying salute, sir. I salute you all as well. Thank you. Heath Whittle says, why? That remains to be seen. There are many agencies that are investigating this. The Maritime Commission is going to investigate this because this was a vessel hauling containers. So the Maritime Commission is going to investigate this. The state of Maryland is going to investigate this. The Baltimore Harbor Masters Association and the Harbor Master Office are going to investigate this. The Navy is going to be involved in this. The um, National Transportation Safety Commission is going to be investigating this for a very long time. Okay. And I'm sure the um, not just the National Transportation Safety Board, but also the Maryland State Police. The Maryland State Police early this morning when this first happened had helicopters in the air going all around that area where the bridge collapsed, trying to see if they saw anyone in the water or saw anybody that needed help. 
Like I said, there may be swimmers still in the water tonight. I don't know for a fact. I know they were in there this afternoon. But they may also be in there tonight trying to locate possible survivors because there are six people that are missing as a result of this accident today. Do any of you have any questions about anything we've covered? Okay. Broke Fish N says, I'm watch talk about bridge strike. Sorry about this call this morning. I did live showing full video. I'm sure you did. And I appreciate what you've done as well. Broke Fish is one of our moderators. He's also a very dear friend of mine from a long time ago. Okay. He does a lot of stuff in about Oregon and Washington. He mostly talks about fires during fire season as well. Okay. He's a great man. So any of you that are interested in Broke Fish, go look him up on Discord. You might also see him here on YouTube, but you'll probably see some of his cohorts here on YouTube talking about fires in the Pacific Northwest. And yes, there's probably going to say have fires all over the Pacific Northwest this year as well. Pam Miller says water must be really cold. Yes, the average water temperature this time of the year in Baltimore is about 48 degrees. And they said earlier this morning that anybody in the cold water is only able to survive maybe a couple hours. Okay. We have somebody from Istanbul, Turkey here. Thank you so much for being here. So we have people that watch our show from Turkey. Please subscribe to this show, guys. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to this show. This is the kind of information you get from Emergency Management Associates. I tell people we talk about hurricanes, we talk about fires, we talk about tornadoes, we talk about winter, spring storms, we talk about rain, we talk about flooding, we talk about all kinds of things here on the show, including earthquakes. Okay, we talk about literally everything all around the globe. This is just one part of this. Okay, Aubrey says, I, or she rebooted, she lost internet midstream and rebooting. Go out from the show and come back in. Usually when you come back in, the show is fine. It's no longer being buffered. And right now, I believe we're fine here. We have good signal strength here at my monitor here. I think we are getting slightly buffered here, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Broke fish says the water is 40 degrees this morning. Not surprising. Doesn't surprise me at all. Does anybody else have any questions about earthquakes now? George Rashad, thank you for being here. George Rashad is also a friend of our program and a friend of mine from way back. And here we're getting buffered again. Isn't that something? I'm getting buffered for my own show. I got on YouTube. George Rashad says that he, it won't hit him like the program. That's typical. Sometimes I have to leave the program, like the show, and come back in. Okay. Connie Quake says, George is the three dots at the left-hand side. Or right-hand side, three dots at the right-hand side. I hope you can get in, George. You're awesome. Like I said, George Rashad is a good friend of ours, a good friend of our program. We appreciate him so much. He's also in the past helped me with information about the various things that are going on. Okay. Let's briefly start at earthquakes now. Okay. Down in the South Pacific, earthquakes come from. It really doesn't, that's just a fact. We watch them happen. Okay. Today, back in the South Pacific, down in the deep South Pacific, let me show you what's going on. Okay. Way down here in the South Pacific. Okay. I want to show you this. Okay. This earthquake I just blew is down in Pange, Tonga. Pange, P A N G A I, Tonga. This is a very large 
5.4, a 5.4 mid-range 5 earthquake. Okay, this is 108 kilometers south-southeast of Pangay Tonga. Now, that's very far from any island. So I don't believe anybody felt this quake. Now, why did we have this quake? Remember the day before yesterday? Let's see what we're here in Vanuatu. It was a very deep quake. It was 594 kilometers deep. When that happened, I told everybody that that quake may end up procreating another quake. Yes, procreating. Earthquakes that are deep end up procreating larger, more shallow quakes. That's what happened here. I believe this 5.4 earthquake was as a result of a 4.7 that happened in Fiji a few days ago. Usually those earthquakes hit within 72 hours to 10 days. Those earthquakes quakes within 72 hours, 10 days. That's what happened here in Penge Tonga today. Just south of this earthquake, this quake was 10 kilometers deep, by the way. Just south and west of there, in the south of the Fiji Islands area. This was a 4.4 moderate quake, a mid-range 4 moderate quake. This is 508 kilometers deep. Well, it's not the deepest quake. It is fairly deep. 508 kilometers deep is fairly deep. As a result of this 4.4 earthquake today, we're probably going to see a 5.2 to a 5.3 magnitude earthquake as a result of this 4.4 today. Sometime within the next 72 hours to 10 days. Okay. Let's go from the west here. Okay. This is another earthquake. This is another five. This earthquake here in the blue is another 5.0 large earthquake in the Solomon Islands. Folks, this earthquake in the Solomon Islands is 104 kilometers west northwest of Kirakira, Solomon Islands. We have had other earthquakes here that were large as well during the past 72 hours, okay? We've talked about these before. This one is a fairly shallow quake. This is only 67 kilometers deep. While it might seem deep to you, this is still a fairly shallow quake, okay? Large shallow quake here in the west. We have another 5.2 earthquake here Madang, Papua New Guinea. Madang, Papua New Guinea. We've had numerous large quakes here, as well as very strong 6.2 and 6.5 earthquakes here in the last two large earthquake. Okay, 5.0 to 5.9 are considered to be large earthquakes, from 5.5 to 5.9 becoming very large earthquakes on the same island. Okay, the same island, we've seen a lot of quakes. Now, this island is very sparsely populated. You see the spine of the island, okay? Each of these islands is a result of volcanic action. The spine of this island is a result of volcanic action. All of the island is a result of volcanic action. Very sparsely populated here. Most people around this side of the island would have felt it. They're all, there are small villages here on Papua New Guinea, near Madang, Papua New Guinea, very small villages. Here's another 4.6. This is 79 kilometers deep. Still a very shallow earthquake, okay? Let's move over here into Indonesia, central Indonesia, right here. This is a good such quake, a 4.6 moderate quake, 35 kilometers deep, central Indonesia. We go further south and west over here to Modizi, Indonesia. 
We usually see volcanoes over here in this area of Indonesia. This is a 4.5 magnitude earthquake. This is only 130 kilometers deep. Still a fairly shallow earthquake. Now, right here, you do not see too many earthquakes. Okay? You saw those two over in Papua New Guinea. You have these two here in central Indonesia. And then we have one out here in the Indian Ocean. This is a 4.6 southwest of Sumatra, Indonesia. This big island just to the north of there is Sumatra, Indonesia. Now, the United States Geological Survey is not showing all the earthquakes here. There's probably 25 earthquakes now here in Indonesia alone. The USBS is not showing any of them except these three. That's a cry in shame because there's still 4.0s, 4.5s, 3.0s, 3.5s, 3.9s, and even some 2.0s to 2.9 minor earthquakes here as well. But USGS won't tell us about that. Now, I'm going to back this out just a little bit. Over here, between Tonga and Samoa, all of this whole area here, all the way over here to Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, and Cambodia here, all this area to encompass also Australia and New Zealand is a huge subduction zone. Seven different tectonic plates. Seven different tectonic plates are moving here. Each one of them is subducting underneath the other. Each one of the plates here is subducting underneath the other. That is why we get so many earthquakes here. It's too darn bad that USGS won't show them to us. It's sad. It's very sad. The only other earthquakes USGS is showing over here or in Europe are here in China, in or excuse me, not in China, but here. I want to show you this earthquake here. This is in Afghanistan. This is a moderate 4.6 in Afghanistan. Afghanistan here is a country in this particular area where most of the people live in caves. So when they get an earthquake, it shakes them up greatly because their ceilings of the caves partially collapse or completely collapse. And those people living in the cave are either killed or have to get out of the cave very quickly as soon as they start feeling the ground shaking. And at this point in time, this earthquake happened at 4.02 a.m. this morning, Eastern Time. Now, I don't know what that would have been here locally in Afghanistan, but that's pretty early here. Okay. The other earthquake here is over in western Iran. This is a 4.5 earthquake here. This is only 10 kilometers deep. Not too bad, huh? I want to go back over here. As you can see in Europe, they're not reporting any quakes. That is a fallacy. That's a lie. There are earthquakes all over here in Turkey throughout this whole area. This area right here that my cursor is on right here. This area here is a huge earthquake zone. One year ago in February last year, there was a 9.0, 10.0 earthquake that struck this area of Turkey, Syria. Today, there are 40 earthquakes in this area alone. 40 earthquakes only in this area alone. All kinds of earthquakes throughout Turkey. Okay? I'm willing to speculate there's probably 100 earthquakes in Turkey alone. USGS not talking about it. Earthquakes over here. I want to show you this. Earthquakes over here in Crete, right here where my cursor is. This is Crete, Greece. Over here in, in Greece here. 25 earthquakes over here in Greece. Fact. Over here in Italy, there are 25 earthquakes at least, and there may, may be even more here in Italy, most of them up here in central Italy. Earthquakes all over here in Sicily as well, okay? 
going up here into the Alps of Europe, okay? Alps of Northern Italy, Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, and France here. Earthquakes all over this area. I'm going to say probably 18 earthquakes in this area, okay? Over here in the border region here between France and Spain, we usually have at least a couple earthquakes here. Over here in Spain, we usually get four or five earthquakes every day here. And right here, Alter, we have anywhere from one or two earthquakes to 10 or 20 earthquakes here because there's a huge fault line here. This fault line comes out of Morocco here up into this area. This fault line also comes out of that same area where Turkey and Syria is. Okay? That's what happens. Then over here on the other side of the Strait of Gibraltar, this area here is the Azores, or are the Azores, okay? Portugal is right here. Usually we have two or three earthquakes right here, okay, in Portugal. We get quite a few earthquakes right here in the Azores here. We also get earthquakes down here in the Canary Islands right here. Two or earthquakes two or three earthquakes a day down here in the Canary Islands. It's a fact, okay? Then, I'm going to back out here. I'm moving over to the Mid-Atlantic Fault. You see the Mid-Atlantic Fault here. Now, I am going to pull down here because earlier we had another 5.0 earthquake over here in the central Mid-Atlantic Fault range right here, okay? This is a 5.2 earthquake, a small 5.2 earthquake, large earthquake, okay? This is north of Ascension Island here in the Atlantic Ocean. Again, this is a mid-Atlantic fault. Most earthquakes here in the mid-Atlantic fault start down here in the South Sandwich Islands. Then they come up here and go up the mid-Atlantic here. And they continue up the mid-Atlantic here all the way up here to Iceland. All the way up here to Iceland. Okay? That's what happens. This 5.2 earthquake, you're going to see it mosey all the way up here through the Mid-Atlantic Fault. Now, as I have explained before, and I'm going to say it again, the Mid-Atlantic Fault is expanding the east side of the Mid-Atlantic Fault is pushing Europe and Africa eastward. This fault is pushing Europe and Africa eastward. All right? The west side of the Mid-Atlantic Fault is pushing North America and Mexico in a south southwesterly direction okay we're seeing it now we have earthquakes up here in iceland okay we have earthquakes all over the island of iceland never let it be said that they don't okay now the mid-atlantic fault starts way down here see this wonderful place it's called the Lake Yenis Peninsula, okay? The Lake Yenis Peninsula. A couple of years ago, down here in the far south part of the Lake Yenis Peninsula, we had a volcano eruption, a volcanic eruption. This volcano poured lava out over all the valleys throughout this area. And you can see the after effects of that er, that volcanic eruption. See the, all of this lava here? That is the result of the volcanic eruption. A lot of vol a lot of molten lava came out of this volcano and covered this area of the Reykjanes Peninsula. All right? Now, what has happened since? This wonderful <clears throat> mid-Atlantic fault goes up through the Reykjanes Peninsula a lot. It's causing all kinds of hate and discontent. It's causing all kinds of hate and discontent. 
Now, I want to show you something. I'm not sure whether they're going to let me show it to you or not. I'm not sure whether they're going to let me show it to you or not. I'm hoping they will. There's a place called Greenavik here. Greenavik is a town of approximately 4,000 people. 4,000 hardworking people. And I don't think they're going to allow me to show it to you now. Now, it doesn't look like I can get any closer than I already am. Over here on the Reykjanes Peninsula, this town called Greenavik is here. Greenavik started off last November by having earthquakes. Greenavik is a harbor port. Okay, They have fishing boats here. A great harbor that they send fishing boats out to sea every morning. And here at the harbor on the pier, they have a fish processing plant. They send fish all over the Iceland island, all over the country, all the way from Greenavik here. Now, why am I talking about that? Why am I talking about it? Folks, we have a volcano, and it has erupted. There's been a great deal of magma eruption down here. Or not magma, but lava eruption here. A great deal of lava. Okay? Now, the lava did not get into Greendevik. They built a huge wall around Greendevik here. They built a huge wall. And so far, that lava has not gotten into Greendevik. Okay? However, and this is a big however, there's also another place where they had to build a great big wall around. Okay? And I've talked about it for the last few weeks. There's a big, huge, I can't say huge, a good-sized geothermal plant where men drilled into the upper magma chambers of the volcano to obtain steam to generate power for the island of Iceland. Not only does the smart Sangi power plant generate power for Iceland, it also pumps hot water from the water table here all over the island to heat homes and heat the buildings and businesses all over Iceland. There's only one other place here on Iceland that has another power plant, and it is much smaller than the Smolsangi power plant. It's up here on the northwest side of Iceland, okay? This is called Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland here, okay? This town of Reykjavik has about 300,000, 400,000 people here, okay? The only other power plant is out here, east of Reykjavik. It's a very much smaller geothermal plant, okay? But it helps the Svartsangi power plant just west of Green Greenavik, okay? It helps. But we've been having earthquakes here all over the Reykjanes Peninsula, especially near Greenavik. They at once thought that Greenavik was going to open up with lava pouring out of the earthquake fissures that opened up in Greenavik. So far, that hasn't happened. The authorities in Greenavik have been covering up the huge faults or fissures that opened up in the ground as a result of the earthquakes. They've been filling them up and repaving them. So Greenavik has streets that are safe. Now, when those earthquakes hit Greenavik, they destroyed a bunch of homes. About 25 homes became unlivable when those earthquakes first struck Greenavik. They also had to evacuate Greenavik because they thought that those fissures were going to open up with lava pouring out of them. That did not happen. Authorities now have let people back into Greenavik, but cautionary. 
Most citizens stay there during the day, getting their houses ready to rehabilitate. Uh, people are trying to sell their houses back to the state for the insurance company to pay those people money to have their homes demolished and move elsewhere. That's what's actually going on there in Green Tobacco. People are allowed to live there. The ships can come and go there. From what happened last Saturday is still eruption. They're still erupting. Okay? It actually wasn't last Saturday. It was a week ago Saturday. It's still erupting. It's the longest-lived eruption in Icelandic history. Most volcanoes erupt for a few days and close off. That didn't happen this time. The fissures that are northwest of Greenabit are still erupting this time. And Lava Smart Sangi Power Plant and the Blue Lagoon Spa. They raised it up. It's now over 50, 40 feet high. It's now well over 40 feet high. At one point, some of the walls were 30 feet high. They raised them up to 40 feet. And now they've raised them up even more to make sure those areas stay safe and aren't penetrated by lava. Okay, that's what's happening. Now, with that said, the lava is still erupting, and as a result, there's toxic gases, sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide still pouring out of the lava there in Iceland. The gases are still moving and flowing around all over those areas, and sometimes they have to evacuate the Swartzangi power plant because the toxic gases have gotten into the Swartzangi power plant area. Then once the weather changes and the toxic gases move someplace else, they repopulate the power plant and the power plant goes on still manufacturing electricity and hot water for the residents of, of Iceland. Okay, that's what's going on. Okay, want to make sure everybody understands that. We talked a lot about Iceland because of the volcanic eruptions. Okay, down in Puerto Rico. I'm waiting for the resolution of this map to come back. Okay, down here in southwestern Puerto Rico. Okay, these earthquakes continue to happen because four years ago, December 20th or 28th, Two man-made earthquakes struck here. Two man-made earthquakes struck here. And I've talked about this a lot in the past. Okay? Two earthquakes struck here. Two facilities that... Two facilities from this organization right here. Okay? Let me get paperclip out of the way to see this. Two organizations with this name. Please do not put this in the chat. I don't want to be taken down by YouTube. They don't like this one. But these people here are responsible for the two 8.0 and 8.4 earthquakes that struck December 28th and December 26th of 2019. Today we have a 2.6 earthquake here just off the coast of Maria Antonia, Antonia, Puerto Rico. Further west here near Guanica, Puerto Rico. This is a 2.3. These are aftershocks of those 8.2 and 8.4 earthquakes, or 8.0 and 8.4 earthquakes, December 26th, December 28th, 2019. This earthquake over here on the southeast side of the island, this has nothing to do with the earthquakes on the southwest. This is a 2.0 off the coast of Negro, Puerto Rico. Okay, this just happened because of where it is. You can see the mountainous regions underneath the sea here uh, in the Caribbean Sea. Folks, this is mountain building under the sea. That's why this earthquake hit. This is extreme mountain building under the Caribbean Sea here on the sea floor. Okay, now you see where this other earthquake here is here? 
This earthquake is just north of the Dominican Republic. It's on the Cayman Ridge here. This earthquake is on the Cayman Ridge. This is a 3.7 earthquake. This is a small upper, upper side small 3.7 earthquake. If this had happened on land, everybody around it would have felt it. Because it happened out in the ocean, the ocean waters absorbed the shockwaves of this quake, and nobody felt it at all. But it is north of the Dominican Republic. Again, it's on the, the Cayman Ridge Fault. It's not necessarily a ridge. It's an undersea, um, shall I say, a trench, the Cayman Trench. This Cayman Trench originates from way over here in Guatemala, okay? Way over here in Guatemala. And it goes east. Then it comes over here and takes an extreme turn to the north, okay? It continues east just south of the Cayman Islands, after which the huge undersea fault zone was named after the Cayman Ridge, goes just south of the Cayman Islands, it goes north of Jamaica, and it skirts the south side of Cuba here. It continues east, north of the Dominican Republic, and also north of Puerto Rico, and it continues north and then, uh, it continues east, and then it continues west after it gets past the Leeward Islands. It goes straight east, or straight, straight east, straight south here, past the Leeward Islands, and then it takes an extreme turn to the west, and it goes into Venezuela here. It goes into Venezuela. It skirts just south of Grenada right there. It skirts just south of Grenada. We have had two 5.0 earthquakes here in this harbor area right here, just south and west of Grenada. Two 5.0 earthquakes here about two years ago, okay? The Cayman Ridge causes a lot of earthquakes. The Cayman Ridge gets its earthquakes from power, seismic energy coming over here from Central America. Again, USGS is not doing any justice to earthquakes here in Central America, none. They're only showing two earthquakes today. This orange earthquake I'm going to highlight to blue, this is near Libertad, El Salvador. This is a 4.3 modern earthquake. Then we come down here. This earthquake is on the Cocos Plate. You see this earthquake fault is called the Cocos Plate. This is a tectonic plate here. This earthquake here is a 4.8 a moderate 4.8 earthquake. This is 10 kilometers deep. This other earthquake that hit just offshore from Libertad, El Salvador is 72 kilometers deep. Both are on the Cocos Plate right here. Okay, that's why we get earthquakes here. They come from South America. All earthquakes work their way north from South America, and it's a shame, but U.S. just is only telling us about one earthquake here in the Chile Argentine border area. This is actually 140 kilometers southwest of San Rafael, Argentina, the border of Chile and Argentina. A 4.4 earthquake here. This is 185 kilometers deep. 185 kilometers deep. Folks, there are at least 25 earthquakes here in South America. It's sad. There's so many earthquakes, and USGS says nothing. Most of the earthquakes happen here in northern Chile and Argentina area and Bolivia area. Most of these are 3.5 to 4.5 earthquakes, and USGS says nothing about it. USGS is only showing you that 4.4 down there in the border region between Argentina and Chile. Earthquakes here in Peru, earthquakes over here in this area of Ecuador. Earthquakes over here in Colombia, okay? Earthquakes here in Panama. Earthquakes over here in Costa Rica. 
and all the way up here in the border region between um, and so El Salvador, Nicaragua, and also up here into Guatemala. Okay? Over here in southern Mexico, USGS is saying nothing. There are 38 earthquakes, or there were earlier, 38 earthquakes here in southern Mexico. And USGS says nothing. Again, most of those earthquakes are small 3.5 to 3.9 earthquakes, or 4.0 to 4.5 earthquakes here in Southern Mexico. All that comes from all the way down in South America and mingling up or merging up here into Central America and Southern Mexico. And they end up going up here. Now I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. I want you to see this. Down here, it's called the San Andres Fault. Yes, folks, the San Andreas Fault comes from all the way up in Northern California, all the way down here along the coast of Southern Mexico. The San Andreas Fault, okay? Let me show you. It goes all the way through here, through the Gulf of California. It goes all the way up through here, through Northern Mexico. And guess what? Guess what? We end up getting earthquakes, guys. We end up getting earthquakes. Guess where this earthquake is here? Would you like to know? This is Holtville, California. This is Holtville, California. You see this whole area here? This is called the Imperial Valley. The Imperial Valley, Imperial County, California. Holtville, we have a seismograph there. Okay, it's called the Salton Sea Desert Research Station. They're showing a 1.7 tremor here. Folks, there's just not 1.7 tremors here. There's microquakes and there's full-blown 2.0, 3.0 earthquakes. USGS is still not telling the truth of what's going on here. Then all the way out here to the east, guess what this is? This is just outside of El Central California. Just outside of El Central California. I want to show you something. Right here is Naval Station El Central, right here where you see my cursor. Over here is El Central, the town of El Central. There's about 20,000 people living here in El Central. 20,000 people. That's a lot of people. Most of them are assigned to Naval Station Air or Naval Air Station El Central here. Okay. There are seismographs located all over Imperial County. Over here, on the southwestern side of the Salton Sea, you can see the Salton Sea here. It looks like a great big huge lake. It is an inland sea. Okay. Over here is Westmoreland, where you see my cursor here. Over here is Calipatria. Both have seismographs and both show earthquakes. Here in Calipatria, guess what? They usually show upwards of 100 to 100 earth, 150 earthquakes every day. Yet USGS is not showing anything here. Not showing a darn thing. Okay? They're lying to the public. Right here where you see my cursor here. This is it, the town of Imperial that the county is named after. Imperial. We have a seismograph here that's also recording earthquakes. Okay? Usually we get at least three or four 3.0 type earthquakes, small earthquakes. Down here in El Central, usually we see dozens of earthquakes now. 3.0, 3.5 earthquakes every day. Dozen earthquakes at least every day here in El Central. A year ago, this was not happening. We would get probably a 5.0, 5.5 earthquake every once in a while. That still happens, and it's going to happen very soon here in the Imperial Valley. And in fact, down here to the south, okay, I want to talk about this. 
right here is the border region of Mexico and California. Right here in this border region in 2010, April 3rd, 2010, we had a 7.1 earthquake right here near the town of Mexicali in Mexico and Calexico on the north side of the border. A 7.1 earthquake with an epicenter of Guadalupe, Victoria, Mexico, just on the border region of Mexico and California. It's going to happen again and probably very soon. The largest earthquake hasn't happened here in 24 years, but it's going to happen. That you can take to the bank. I've seen it happen here before. It's going to happen again. I was here in San Diego for a disaster drill when that earthquake hit San Diego. Okay? just want to show you that. Look at all the other earthquakes happening here. This area, this area here that I'm showing you here is the Diego Desert State Park, northeast San Diego County. Northeast San Diego County. Right here, San Diego. This is in the eastern mountains of San Diego County, Julian, California. This is a 1.1 tremor. We go north, and I'm only going to highlight decent-sized quakes here. Going north, this is up near Los Angeles in the town called who is present from 1968 to 1974, was born here in Yorba Linda, California. Okay. We go north. This is Granada Hills, just north of Los Angeles. This is a 1.2 tremor. Now, we're only showing tremors here. Isn't it interesting? Because, folks, there's a lot more than just tremor activity happening here in Los Angeles. I could show you seismograms, which are the documented copies from the seismograph showing you earthquakes all over this area. Literally all over, okay? Yes, we're going to see an earthquake here very soon. A major earthquake by the tune of 7.0 earthquake to maybe 8.0 here in the L.A. Orange County area. It's going to happen, okay? Going up here. This is Tehachapi, California. One of the most dangerous roadways, Interstate 15, here in Southern California along what they call the garlic fault here. This is a garlic fault here. Okay? We go north and east. This is the Cyril's Valley Ridgecrest area. We have one. What is this? What is this? This is Little Lake, California. Little Lake, California. Now, we do see tremors here. And that's what we're seeing here in Little Lake, Lake California. This is in the Mojave Desert. The Mojave Desert stretches way down here to the south and goes way up here. This earthquake here is at 1.1 tremor. This is in Olan. This is Cyril's Valley Ridge Crest area. This is Olan to California here. This whole area here is budding with minor tremors and earthquakes. Okay. This is a launch of this in 2019. Ridgecrest had a 7.1 earthquake and two 6.9 earthquakes. Those 6.9 earthquakes were probably 7.0 earthquakes as well. USGS lied about that from San Diego County north to Olancha and maybe a little bit further north in this area. 15,000 earthquakes in about a 45 day period as well as the 7.0 earthquakes hitting here, okay? Let's go north. This, folks, is along the San Andreas Fault as well, okay? We're back on the San Andreas Fault. The reason I'm showing you this, this is earthquake capital of California. This is Parkfield, California, right there. Earthquake capital of California. Down here, guess what? San Simeon, California. This is on the Oceana Fault here. This is a 1.3 tremor. Three years ago, we had a 5.0 earthquake here in San Simeon. One of our own friends here, Sage Pup, 
was here with his girlfriend on vacation when that earthquake struck. Okay. This is just barely southwest of Parkfield, earthquake capital of California. They have more earthquakes here than any, any place else. Then we come up here. This is the Pinnacles. Here is an oil and gas producing area also on the San Andreas Fault. Wonderful thing, right? Oh, yeah. Look at this. Okay. I'm going to click on two earthquakes here. This is Tres Pinos. Three years ago, we had a 5.1 earthquake and a large fire at an oil refinery here in Tres Pinos. As a result of that 5.1 earthquake on the San Andreas Fault right here in Tres Pinos. Just to the north of that, we continue having earthquakes here. Again, it's on the San Andreas Fault. Okay. This, folks, is Ridgemark, California. Ridgemark, California. Today, right now, they're not showing any earthquakes here in the San Francisco Bay Area, but there are, and there have been. USGS deleted them. USGS deleted them. Really quick, I'm going to take you on a trip to Discovery. This is Lake Tahoe here. Lake Tahoe. You see earthquakes here? This is along another fault line. The Walker Lane Fault. We're going to have an, we, about two and a half years ago, we had a 6.5 earthquake here. We have another 1.2 in Virginia City, Nevada. And just above that, just north of that, we have another one. This is a 0 0.7 microwave also near Virginia City and just north of Tahoe. Just north of Tahoe and Florida, California, we have a 0 0.7 microquake. Okay? The water lane fault goes all the way up here to this other lake here. This is called Pyramid Lake. I'm going to let the map resolve really quick. I want to show you this. This lake is called Pyramid Lake. This is just another volcano. This little tiny speck right here is an island. And guess what? This is a summit of Pyramid Volcano. Pyramid Volcano. Another lake inside the caldera, the floor of the up here to the southern end of Pyramid Lake. At some point in time, the Walker Lane Fault is going to open up all the way from down south at the Gulf of California, and it's going to open up an inland waterway all the way through California, through up into Nevada, all the way here to Pyramid Lake. There will be an inland waterway. That's why I'm showing you this. Just north of Pyramid Lake, two more earthquakes here. This one is a 0.5 microquake near Herlong, California. Herlong, California, H-E-R-L-O-N-G. Northeast of there, this is Empire, Nevada. This is another 0 0.7 microquake here, okay? Now, I'm going to go back here, okay? What's this? What are these earthquakes here? This is 100 miles north of... Um, San Francisco, San Francisco Bay. This is called the Geysers. It's in Sonoma County. The Geysers here, we have another geothermal power plant. Each time that men drilled into the upper magma chambers of this lake here, this is another volcano. This is called Clear Lake Volcano. Men have drilled into this volcano to the upper magma chambers to obtain steam to generate electricity down here at the turbines here in Sonoma County to generate electricity to sell the four energy conglomerates, including Pacific Gas and Electric and Rocky Mountain Power in Utah. Those are just two of the energy conglomerates getting power from the geysers. Why does it happen? Why are we having earthquakes? Because every hole in the ground that we dig, including for oil, 
each one of those holes, each one of those drill holes is a human-made earthquake fault. That's why we're getting so many earthquakes here in the geysers area. Guess what? We have over 30 earthquakes here in the geysers area right now. Right here in the geysers area here. Guess what? Over here at Clear Lake, we have another earthquake. Why? Why are we seeing an earthquake here at Clear Lake? It's a volcano. This is a 1.5 tremor at a volcano. Magma is resurging to all the volcanoes all around the earth. That's why this earthquake hit here. We are getting numerous and seeing numerous earthquakes here at Clear Lake because it is indeed a volcano. And we're still getting steam from this volcano over here to power turbines to generate electricity. So this, er, this volcano is resurging. Magma is coming into that volcano. Okay. Now I have some more things I want to show you. The San Andreas Fault you see here is still running through the state of California. Down here, just north of San Francisco Bay, it starts to go inland, except here at the mouth of San Francisco Bay. Then it goes way inland, going all the way through California, down to and through northern Mexico, and down south to the Gulf of California. Okay? Then it continues up north. Okay, it starts going off the coast of Northern California here. Wonderful thing here. Okay, right here. This is the Mendocino Fault. This is part of the Mendocino Fault. This is a 1.9, 2.0 earthquake east of Petrolia, California. Southeast of Petrolia, California. A 2.0 minor earthquake here. We go north, and again, this is on the Mendocino Fault. The Mendocino Fault comes from this fault here. This is the Gord Escarpment. The Gord Escarpment. This runs about 280 miles west of the coast of California. Okay? We have earthquake faults here. The Garla, or the Garlic. The Gorda Escarpment connects with the San Andreas Fault and also the Cascade, Cascadia Subduction Zone right here. This fault here runs from Northern California all the way up the coast of California, Oregon, and Washington, and up the coast of Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada, all the way north to the... Um, Queen Charlotte's Island, Queen Charlotte Island, British Columbia. But again, we have one more earthquake to show you here in Northern California. This is Rio Del, Rio Del. Last time we had a very strong earthquake was right here, just off the coast of California. USGS called it a 6.4 earthquake. I pulled all the data from that earthquake I found out USGS was really lying about it. They were hugely lying about it. That earthquake was an 8.4 earthquake. It was an 8.4 major earthquake. It rattled this area like nothing else. It rattled this entire area here, all over. Rio Del had a lot of damage. There is another Fortuna over here that had a lot of damage. And Ferndale right here had a lot of damage. Petrolia down here had a lot of damage. USBS was lying about it. If this had been a 6.4 earthquake, there would have been very little damage here along the coast. It was an 8.4 earthquake, and USGS agency lied about it. Out and out lied about it. Okay, let's go north. There's a reason I'm going north here. Now, you saw the Gorda Escarpment come out from where it joined here with the um, San Andreas Fault and the Cascadia Subduction Zone here. 
Okay, this is called the triple junction. We have earthquakes here all the time. The Gorda Escarpment goes 280 miles off the coast of California. It joins up here with the Gorda Ridge. The Gorda Ridge goes all the way up here from the Gorda Escarpment. Today, up here, just off the coast, not off the coast, off the fault zone of the Gorda Ridge, we have a 3.0 earthquake. This is 236 kilometers west of Port Orford, Oregon. West of Port Orford, Oregon. Folks, right here, where my cursor is, there was another 3.5 earthquake hit here earlier today. USGS has taken it down. Okay. Usually the agency has left earthquakes up for 24 hours. This time they took it down. This is a Cascadia subduction zone region. Why do I harp on the Cascadia subduction zone region? Because 234 years ago, there was an 8 point, or excuse me, a 9.0, earthquake right here in this area along the Cascadia subduction zone and the Juan de Fuca plate right here. This is the Juan de Fuca plate. And this Juan de Fuca plate connects down here with the Blanco fracture zone, which connects down here with the Gorda Ridge, which connects down here with the Gorda Escarpment, which connects over here with the San Andreas Fault. Okay? Either way. Now, why do I want to show you this? Because we are, or we are 34 years past 234 years overdue for a 9.0, 10.0 earth shattering, literally, earthquake. It's going to happen. It is definitely going to happen. We've seen a lot of earthquake here activity right here in this area. It's going to happen again. There's still a lot of earthquake activity happening here, but USGS is not showing it. They're not. They're not showing anything that's happening here, and I can prove it. There are seismograms showing earthquake activity all over this area. They're just not showing it. Way up here in the British Columbia, Canada, this is supposedly a 1.9, 2.0 explosion here in Princeton, Canada. Okay, USGS also wants to tell us that we have explosions here. We have quarry blasts here. Well, folks, let me show you where this explosion happened. British Columbia, Canada in the middle of a forest. British Columbia, Canada in the middle of in a forest. If they're not harvesting trees by blowing the place up, this was not an explosion. It also was not a spontaneous combustus carnivorous, an exploding tree. This was, however, a 2.0 earthquake. A 2.0 earthquake, 32 kilometers west-southwest of Princeton, Canada. A 2.0 earthquake there. And yet they want to say it's an explosion. Don't believe half of what you hear from USBS. They tell us about that all the time. They're so freaking wrong, it's not funny. Okay? I want to show you about a couple earthquakes here in the Pacific Northwest really quick, then we're going to get out of here. Right here. Guess what, folks? This earthquake is just north of Mount Rainier, northwest of Mount Rainier. Unumclaw, Washington. Unumclaw, Washington. We just got through having a 2.8 earthquake here the other day. And they're trying to pass off a micro, microquake 0 0.8 here. Bull crap. Bull crap. If I showed you the seismograph from here, there would be a bunch of microquakes and tremors all over this place and probably 2.0 earthquakes here all the time. This is Mount Rainier here. Mount Rainier is getting ready to erupt. Mount Rainier is getting ready to erupt. It's a volcano, for those of you that don't know. Mount Rainier has about 10 seismographs located around the mountain. Each of the seismographs is recording data, and there are seismograms showing the data. 
earthquakes, tremors, and microquakes all over Mount Rainier, and yet they're not showing any today. In the past week, I've shown you 3.5 earthquakes hitting here at Mount Rainier, and yet USGS does not identify anything, anything. We go over here to the southwest, away from Mount Rainier. This is a 2.4 earthquake, allegedly 14 kilometers southwest of Alder, Washington. A 2.4 earthquake here, a minor earthquake. I believe this is probably a minor earthquake because there's magma flowing underneath the ground here through the crust of the earth over here to Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier is going to erupt at some point. I can't tell you when it is because I don't know. I wish I could. Further south from this earthquake, this is a 1.0 tremor near Mossy Rock, Washington. We're getting a lot of tremors out of here and 2.0 earthquakes in Mossy Rock, Washington. We go further south. You see earthquakes hitting just north of Mount St. Helens here. Just north of Mount St. Helens. These are in the foothills of Mount St. Helens. This time, look at this swarm of earthquakes here. Okay, I'm going to identify each one of them. This is a 1.0. This is a 0 0.8 microquake. 1.0 tremor to a 0 0.8 microquake. This is a 0 0.8 microquake. This is also 0 0.9 microquake. This is a 2.5 earthquake. 2.5, I'm sorry, 2.5 minor earthquake just north of Mount St. Helens. This is a 1.6 tremor, also north of Mount St. Helens. Okay? So we have a swarm of earthquakes north of Mount St. Helens. What's going on here? This is Mount St. Helens here. In 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted. It spewed molten lava out from the summit here and knocked out this part of the mountain. Knocked out the northwest part of the mountain, or northeast part of the mountain. Okay? Look at that. Guess what? Here at the summit of Mount St. Helens, inside the crater, this is what they call a 0 0.2 microquake, okay, they want to think everybody is going to think that this is right here at the summit. It's not. This microquake happened 7.4 kilometers deep, nearly four miles deep inside the volcano, okay? How about this? This is, they say this is a 0 0.2 microquake here, just outside the volcano. This earthquake happened, this microquake happened because it originated 6.5 kilometers deep, three miles deep inside the volcano. Okay? Even though it shows to be on the outside, it's not. I keep moving my camera here. Folks, this is just outside the rim, but it's very deep inside Mount St. Helens. I've also shown you in the past few weeks, 3.5, 4.0, and 4.5 modern earthquakes happening here at Mount St. Helens. A lot of earthquakes, upwards of 100 to 150 microquakes, tremors, and major earthquake, or not major, but modern earthquakes happening at Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier are getting ready to erupt fact. And yet USGS is not showing much of anything. They're not showing any of the small 3.0, 3.5 earthquakes. They're showing two microquakes. How about that for lying? Lying to the public. Okay. They're not showing half, not even an eighth of all the earthquakes hitting here in Washington and Oregon. I guarantee you the volcanoes are getting ready. They are. Now, I'm just briefly going to show you Alaska. Why? Because there are earthquakes all over southern Alaska here. There's a large swarm of earthquakes all over southern Alaska. Down here, 
This is just south of Mount Readout, Readout, another volcano here. Down here, a swarm of tremors here. This is another volcano, old Ililama volcano here. There are 65 volcanoes here in Alaska, including down here in the um, peninsula of Alaska, going out here into the Aleutian Island Fault Zone. Okay, the Aleutian Island Fault Zone. Over here, Kamchatka Peninsula, guess what? This, folks, is a 4.7 modern earthquake at Kamchatka Peninsula, at a volcano. At a volcano. A 4.7 magnitude earthquake at a volcano. Why? Because that volcano is getting ready to erupt. It's erupted before and it's getting ready to erupt again. Okay? Earthquakes all stretching all the way up here to the Arctic Circle. Okay, this is a 2.1 earthquake at what near Wiseman, Alaska. 2.1 minor earthquake up here at the Arctic Circle. At the Arctic Circle. Yesterday up here was near the North Shore at Katavik, Alaska. We have oil and gas pumping operations all along this northern shore up here in the Bering Sea. Okay. Earthquakes up here in Katavik, Katavik, Alaska are only showing you what is going on beneath the surface here, okay? Earthquakes all over, literally all over Alaska. Probably 60 plus earthquakes here in Alaska today, okay? Now, that's all I'm going to show you. Do you guys have any questions about earthquakes today, okay? Or anything I've had to show you about the accident over in Maryland today. Okay. Demon Catman says, yes, Mary, a possible large earthquake. You're right. Demon Catman, you're absolutely right. Live in Wyoming. Or she lives in Wyoming. Now, she says Yellowstone could have an effusive eruption. Let me tell you something. There's not going to be an effusive eruption anytime soon. There are a lot of vents. The vents are letting energy out in the form of geysers. That's what's happening in Yellowstone right now. Geysers letting out energy. Okay? A lot of geysers. Now, there is a dike of magma underneath Yellowstone Lake. At least there was. We have not seen any activity under Yellowstone Lake in quite a while. Okay? That dike may have turned into solid rock. Yellowstone Lake was heating up the last time they checked. But lately, there have been no earthquakes at all under Yellowstone Lake. They were, we were actually fearing an eruption under Yellowstone Lake because if that lava poked into Yellowstone Lake because of the colder water of Yellowstone Lake, there could be a cataclysmic eruption. With the, hot, the cold water heating the hot lava turning into a huge explosion, a cataclysmic eruption. So far, that's not happening right now, and I don't think it's going to happen any time in the future. Yes, we're going to have a large earthquake in Yellowstone, but the last large earthquakes in Yellowstone didn't set up the volcano at all. Not at all. I just don't think it's going to happen. Aubrey's asking, how about the lift at Yellowstone? The magma underneath the surface lifts up the ground. There's only been a very light lift so far. And I'm talking maybe a centimeter, maybe a centimeter. All year long, it takes maybe three centimeters gain and lift, uplift from the volcano. Three centimeters every year. That's not much. That's not much. Anybody have questions? Those are good questions. Any questions? Now, Don Patoka has been putting out some good information all throughout this cat podcast. He says he keeps hearing, I can't do this. I can't do that. Guess what? Can't never did anything. Can't never did anything. You have to set your mind to doing anything. We talk a lot about emergency preparedness on this channel. We talk a lot about it. Now, 
Why? We're trying to get people in the mindset to prepare for emergencies, whether it's a volcanic eruption, a major earthquake, or major storms, major fires. We talk about it a lot. Connie Quake is asking, did, did Ohio have an earthquake this afternoon or today? USGS is not showing anything over there in Ohio. Not a thing. They are showing one earthquake over in the New Madrid area of Missouri, central Missouri. It's a 1.4 tremor. Now, folks, they're showing a 1.4 tremor. I will bet you, I will bet you if I pulled up a seismogram from New Madrid, Missouri, you would show more than just one 1.4 tremor. Guaranteed, if not 2.0, 2.5 earthquakes at New Madrid, Missouri. USGS tries to, to stroke us. Oh, nothing's happening. Yes, New Madrid is going to pop. And I'm not giving it much more than a couple, three years. New Madrid is getting ready to pop. In the past three years, folks, three years ago, there was nothing happening there. Just minor tremors and microquakes anywhere up and down the entire New Madrid fault. Now, today, totally different story. Yes, we still get tremors, but we're seeing 2.5 earthquakes. We're seeing 3.0, 3.5, and even upwards of 4.5 moderate earthquake over there in the mid area of the Numatter Fault. Numatter is going to happen. It's going to pop up when any nobody expects it to. Last time it did was 18, December 1811 into January 1812. Thousands of earthquakes hit there. Thousands of earthquakes hit there. It stopped the Mississippi River from flowing for seven minutes. It created a lake that, where there was none, where there was no lake. It's now called Real Foot Lake. The Mississippi River filled that valley there. That lake may have old cabins or de deteriorated cabins by now where people used to live. It killed a few people because at that time, this whole area in the mid, in the New Madrid area, let me show you this really quick. I want to show you this because USGS certainly is not going to do it. They're only showing one minor tremor there, which is sad, which is sad. This is a 1.2 tremor that they're showing you here, right there. This is New Madrid, Missouri, central Missouri here. This is where we expect the New Madrid fault to blow, to open up. Now, folks, scientists believe this whole area of the New Madrid fault experienced, experienced an 8.0 plus earthquake. Okay, they first thought it was a 7.0 earthquake. They now say it was probably more like an 8.0 earthquake. It rung church bells on the East Coast. That major earthquake rung, rang church bells on the East Coast. That was how powerful it was. The roadways up and down alongside the fault on the east and the west side of the fault were cow paths horse paths, horse trails. Today, those have been paved over to two-lane highways. Two-lane highways running north and south. All the way down here through Louisiana and Arkansas down here to the Gulf of Mexico. Okay? Now this fault area is bustling with millions of people. Driving up and down two-lane blacktop, one lane going in each direction. Can you imagine what's going to happen when the new matter fault goes up now? Massive amounts of people are going to be killed. USGS believes there are only going to be 1,700 people killed when the new matter fault erupts again. I think it's going to be far more than that. These old horse paths and cow paths that have highways on them now are going to turn into huge fissures where the earth is going to open up. 
The roads won't be able to be traveled on. There will be no commerce coming down the roads because the roads will have to be repaired. The cities up and down the New Madden Fault will be left without anything. Now, what is going to happen? When that fault goes, cities will be cut off. Water mains and gas mains that are presently providing power and water to the people are going to be blown. There's going to be fires and lack of water over here. The only people who will be able to fight fire will be the trucks with a limited amount of water that might be able to last a couple hours, but the main firefighting will have to be done with planes and helicopters. That's what's going to happen all up and down the fault line. We did a disaster drill over here in Little Rock, Arkansas with this fault back in 2011. The 200 year anniversary of the New Madrid Fault. During that drill, the first day we had four 3.5, 3.7 earthquakes up and down the fault. One earthquake hit just southwest of Tulsa, Oklahoma, also along the New Madrid Fault. We had people in Tulsa waiting for it, and it did, excuse me, it did happen. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. Is anybody ready for what's going on? Yes, a lot of you live in this fault area. I know that. We've been talking about this for a very long time. I keep telling you and showing you what's going on. I show you data showing you what's happening. It's going to happen again. I can promise you that. I can promise you that. Now, there was another earthquake in the Southern Pacific, okay? This happened while we were on the air. This was, let me briefly go back here to the map. This was down here in the Vanuatu region, just south of Vanuatu. Okay. This is just southwest of Fiji. This is a 6.7 earthquake. They've labeled it, but I will bet you dial dimes to dollars that it's probably a 7.0 earthquake or larger. And I will have more data on that tomorrow when we come on the air. But I will bet you that was a 7.0 plus earthquake down here in the Vanuatu region today. Now, this was in the South Pacific. This was in the South Pacific. I do not believe there are any islands any, anywhere close to here. If there's any islands, there are minute islands here. I don't see any life on any islands here in the region. Okay? This is the ocean. It absorbs the shockwaves from earthquakes in this region, okay? Nobody felt this, but it happened down here in the South Pacific. We've seen it here before. It'll happen again. We've seen 7.0 earthquakes just north of here in Vanuatu. We've seen it happen. I've had friends that lived here in Vanuatu at the time, Okay. They do happen tomorrow. Again, I believe this was at least a 7.0 earthquake here tonight. Any other questions? I pretty much showed you all the earthquakes all over the world today. And I'm telling you right now, there's a lot more earthquakes in USG on us. Earlier today, I thought they showed us like an extreme small amount of quakes. Now they're showing us 255 earthquakes. We've had enough, enough earthquakes since I came on the air and you guys started watching this program where we have now have 255 earthquakes that USGS has shown us. Well, glory be. I will dare say there's close to 800, 900 earthquakes worldwide right now. And I could go back and show you where they are all over the world because USBS is lying through their teeth. They're lying through their teeth. Okay. Demon Catman says they, they've upgraded it to a 6.7. I will bet you it's a larger earthquake. Connie Quake says Ron called it too. Yeah, I probably did. 
I probably did. Now, I don't pat myself on the bat because I call an earthquake. But quite honestly, we can see them happening. We can see them brewing by watching these other quakes. Okay? That's how we know that. That's how we know it. Now, I know I've been on here a long time. I've been jacking my jowls about that one event in Baltimore for over an hour today. Now we're pushing close to 9.40 p.m. Eastern time. Okay? I'm sorry to have taken you this long. I know quite a few of you have probably gone to sleep. Sorry about that. But I wanted to make sure we covered the information because I feel it is mandatory. You guys deserve it. You guys deserve to know what's going on because the agencies will not show it to you. Carolyn Martin here is in the chat. She says preparatory 101. Step one, safety and water. Two, shelter, food, warmth. Step two, soap, medical, money, documents, sanitary, and after that, anything else that you need. Okay. She and Dawn are probably more accurate at preparations than anyone. Everyone here needs to be preparing for a big earthquake, a big fire, a big flood, a major hurricane, or a major tornado. I've been there, done that. I've either been there at a tornado site, like happened in um, Missouri quite a few years ago, okay? I saw it happen. I got called there to be part of the recovery from that town that got hit. Terrible, terrible tornado, huge tornado, destroyed a hospital and a lot of other infrastructure. It's incredible. We all need to prepare. We all need to be prepared. Everyone, I love you very much. Please know that. Please not put multiple emojis here in the chat. You can put two or three, but other than that, if it's over that, our mods will take you down. We won't allow you to put up that chat. Sorry about that. It's not going to happen. Plus, if you're not talking about what we're talking about, that chat will also go away. Okay? Right now, I'm showing 108 thumbs up. That's wonderful. If you've not already given us a thumbs up, please do so. Thumbs up mean a lot, okay? It has to do with the analytical factors that YouTube judges this program on, okay? They look at analytical factors such as thumbs up. They look at comments after the video. If you have a comment to share with us, please do this after the video. Put a comment down after a program. We'd really appreciate it. Also, the watch time that you're here watching our program, that may, also means a great deal. The longer you watch, the more kudos YouTube gives us. The more ideas that maybe Ron knows what he's talking about, YouTube will share it. YouTube doesn't like to share videos. They don't like to even notify people when we come on the air. Please subscribe to our program. Also, when you subscribe, there's something else you must do. In order to get notified when we come on the air, there's a little bell icon used to be in a circle. It might just be on its own as a little bell. Click on that bell. When you do so, there will be a drop-down menu of the items. Click on the word ALL. That should get you notified when we come on the air. Please do that. That way you'll know when we come on the air. We talk about a lot of important things, including preparedness. This Friday, we're going to be talking about emergency preparedness as well as other earthquakes and other emergencies happening around the world. We always do. So be here Friday. Be here the rest of this week. We're going to talk about the Pacific Northwest. We'll talk further about the New Madden Fault within the next couple of days. I promise you. We will touch on both fault zones as well as all the other earthquakes and emergencies, disasters that happen worldwide. Okay, that's what we do here at Emergency Management Associates. We appreciate you all being here. Yes, we covered that emergency in Maryland. It is indeed an emergency. It may have killed up to six people and maybe even more 
as a result of that ship hitting that pier at the Francis Scott Key Bridge. We'll have updates tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon about that. Please be here for that. Charlene Saban is saying thank you, Ron, for that. I appreciate that. Also, if you want to um, want to leave us a super chat here, you can do that here. You can also go to our PayPal location locations, which will be in the upper part of our program description. There will be no prescription right away after this program is over, but within the next 15 minutes, you'll see that in the top of our program description. You'll see two PayPal locations. You'll also see our post office box, 104 North Green Street, 104 North Green Street, box 105. Morganton, M-O-R-G-A-N-T-O-N, North Carolina. Zip code is 28655. You're going to see that there as well. Thank you for your love. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your super chats. Thank you for whatever you do for us. It's greatly appreciated. It really is. It's helping keep this program on the air and improving our program and our bandwidth on our Wi-Fi to make sure we get this program out to you and stop YouTube from buffering it. Thank you all for being here. God bless you. God be with you. It's We've gone way too long tonight. I usually give you a spiritual thought after the end of this program. I will tomorrow night for sure. Okay? We've gone here nearly three hours now, and I'm sorry. God be with you until we meet again. We will see you tomorrow night. Thank you all. Thank our mods. Bless you all, mods. You are awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. We appreciate all of you here tonight. Good night, everybody. Much love.